Hello Scrappy Peeps, Iris here with a process video. I feel like it's been forever since I did a process video. Uh, certainly haven't done one for May yet. I've been filming the layouts I've been making, I just haven't had time to do the edits. Well this one is for Get It Scrapped, I did it last month, and it's just been up on the blog this week. The assignment was to do creative journaling, mix and match journaling. And when I was thinking about this assignment, I wanted to do something that was a somewhat funny story and also kind of whimsical. So let me get to what I'm doing right now. You see here, I was just showing you that I'm using a back, backing paper. It's from Coco Vanilla Studios' You Rock collection, and it is like a constellation. And I've cut a cup file that has all these arrows pointing inward towards uh, where my photo is going to be. And I did from the original, I removed some of the arrows from the original because they were going all the way around because I wanted to make room for my journaling. To make this less stark, I am doing some mixed media with the packaging technique. So you saw there I had some distress ink in tumbled glass, and twisted citron. This is my favorite way to do mixed media. Just stamp on my Heidi Swap mat, just directly on there, spritz some water, and take the piece of packaging, just smoosh, smoosh, smoosh. So I've been testing the colorway. The tumbled glass was too blue for my photo. If, if you saw when I had my photo there, it's more of aqua tones and some dark navy. So I've just mixed up until I found a ratio that I liked, and here I am smooshing it on. And what I love about this is you, it doesn't take very much to do to do it. You can see there was not much that I used. And then I go back and smoosh it even further to spread it out, and it's almost like I watercolored it on the background. And I, I am not a watercolorist, so this is like the way that I make mixed media work best for me. I love it. Then I have some Heidi Swap, Heidi Shine, uh, Heidi Swap Color Shine in teal. And while I normally would also just sprinkle this in little splatters, which I'm doing here now, I wanted to give another dimension to my mixed media background. So I'm also going to smoosh those. And I love the darker, brighter splatters here. They're shivery, so it's just another dimension to the other color I put on there. I really love how that came out. I think I will be doing that combination more. Um, I've been getting more into using like acrylic paints that I thin down and uh, mists, and in this, you know, just smoosh smoosh. So for this layout, I chose to do a story about, so on the surface, I'm telling the story of my daughter, my younger daughter, Maya. She has always had like lots of cute things that we've done at bedtime and they've changed throughout the years. And then she, she usually calls it out. It's like, it's, it's been named and she calls it out. So because this is, the assignment was creative mix and match techniques for journaling. I am going to, in the journaling, the names that she gave are a little bedtime routines. And she would just shout, shout them out like, you know, hoist, or, you know, like one more book. So those I'm picking out and doing in tile stickers. And then you saw me here do the Your Darn Water Bottle. <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. Uh, that is the title, and it is actually going to flow within the all the journaling. So when I was approaching this, I typed up what I wanted to say and edited it, and what I did was the things that would become, would be spelled out with the tile stickers, I capitalized in my typed journaling. And then I decided that I, I don't want the journaling to feel like it's a separate thing from the layout. I wanted it to blend in. I printed it on vellum. And that's become, I think that's become one of my things is printing my journaling on vellum. I love that you can still do printing in strips. And you'll see here, I'm going to be doing a lot of snipping it up into smaller chunks and moving it around to fit everything in and that works really well 
But then when you glue it all down, it feels like it, it's part of the background because it's it's transparent. So it's not like chunks above the background. It blends in. So here, <laughs> these circular little tile stickers, I was going to spell out the second thing that I wanted in my journaling because I want to alternate the colors and the shapes of the stickers, just add the whimsy to it. And uh, I had no H and a lot of things I wanted to spell had H's. So here I've been like pointing at the letters thinking, okay, can I spell this? Can I spell that? I finally found something that I could spell, which is a little further down in my journaling than I wanted to, but that's fine. It's going to be all mix and match and it's great. So a little bit about the story real quick. Uh, my daughter at bedtime, you know, she'll demand things like one more book. And she has this thing called double dippies for a while. Like it went for on for several years where it's like, uh, you know, you say goodnight, do the kisses and hugs and whatever. And she thought double dippies, meaning let's do it again. Um, this one that I spelled out with the little circle ones is called nuzzies, which is more of a current one she does just with my husband. They do this whole ritual where they nuzzle their noses and nuzzle their cheeks together and, and then do it again and then do it again. And then they have these little pop noises and they kind of head chin, butt their chins. I don't know. It's this whole little thing they made up and it's, it's hilarious. And I've gotten it like recorded on voice, my voice memos, because it's dark, you know, and, and I don't want to intrude in the moment. So I just kind of creep in and have my phone extended so I could capture at least the, the, um, the audio. And I really recommend anyone with children, uh, or, you know, you can do this with anything, like even if it's dark, whatever, record those things. It is, I wish I had some of the recordings of when my older daughter was little, tiny, little. So anyways, here I have cut up all my journaling and uh, you see I got a whole bunch of tile stickers spelling out what I wanted to spell. I fast forwarded and cut out most of that because it's, it's kind of boring. Um, this journaling is, I gotta admit, it's, it's time consuming. Uh, I don't think I've done, I've done some creative mix and match journaling before with integrating stickers in and also handwriting, but uh, not this extensively and the writing got oh, <laughs> ahead of me in that um, I only allotted myself a smaller amount of space that's where I removed arrows from my cup file thinking the journaling would fit in there and no first of all the stickers were bigger than I was thinking they would be and second of all I just had a lot to say so I'm here towards the end and what you see me doing now is I printed the last bit of journaling, but I thought maybe I would want to incorporate my handwriting for this bit because it changes in tone. The top just says, you know, our night night rich routines have been full of lovely moments with cute conversations and giggles, but a lot of demands. And then it says, okay, you, you'd yell out just one more book. And then there was the time where you would like lay with me and then, you know, double dippies and we'd have to do it over and over again, all those demands. And one thing that always has been consistent is that she hands me the water bottle after we've done everything else, hands me the water bottle. It's like, well, my water bottle. And it's like, uh, it's always me. <laughs> it's never dad. So that's the tone of the first part of the journal. But after the title of your darn water bottle, I, I say how much like, you know, in the moment, it's been kind of like, ah, uh, but really, when my baby's gone, I'll be looking back at these things with such nostalgia, you know, and just like, oh, I miss that. I miss the times when she was little and I, you know, demanding and, and whatnot because it's all full of sweetness as well. And, you know, it's growing up. So that last little bit at the bottom, I considered handwriting. I didn't like the way it was going to look. I wasn't going to be able to fit it all in the space. My writing would be bigger. So I ended up just using the printed. All right, now back to what I'm doing on screen. Um, I was using the Tim Holtz matte medium. I like to use that for strips, paper strips uh, in particular. And because my needle on the top was, you know, it broke off, I used these little dental, um, they're tiny little, almost like Q-tips, they're little brushes. And I started doing that with these, but I found that the vellum curled with anything liquid and the uh, ink was very quick to smear. So I switched to using my Zaron sticker maker. I 
the sticker makers have been around for ages. I have like all the sizes. This is the one I use the most and it's invaluable. Um, and it worked out really well, even with all these little tiny pieces. Also works well to use my EK Success tool. It is a, um, it's called a, a reverse tweezer. So I've mentioned this in another video at least before. They, another tool I just could not scrap without. You can see those little tiny pieces and I, I, I went through a period of time my nails were trashed. So I couldn't even use my nails to pick things up very well. And these tweezers, they are closed in the natural position. You squeeze them to open. So it's very nice when you, you squeeze it open, grab whatever you need, and then you let go and you're just, you can use the tool to move it all around and it's nice and secure until you're ready to put it down exactly where you want. So that was an invaluable tool for this type of journaling. And so here I'm gonna go through some of the uh, actual adhesion, <laughs> putting it all down. I'll fast forward in a second, but I wanted to mention that with this type of journaling, it would probably have been faster, easier to do it all digital. And for me, having a wide format printer, I could easily could have print, you know, gotten it all set up, uh, used, I have plenty of digital uh, products. I could even have, you know, if I had those round ones, I, I don't, you don't have to worry about running out of letters and you can recolor and all that. So it probably would have been somewhat easier. And I could have run a full sheet and had it, you know, printed directly on the background, or I could have done a smaller sheet of regular paper and, you know, stuck it on the side. Anyways, what I wanted to say about that is that yes, digital perhaps might be a good way to go for something like this where you're mixing matching journaling, but I actually really enjoyed, it was a process, it was long, but I kind of really had fun with this. Uh, I love the tactile nature of having the different types and layers. Uh, obviously, that's why I'm a paper scrapper for the most part, but I also just, um, it was just chill, you know, uh, at some point you get to the point where you're like just on autopilot and I was just watching Netflix and rearranging things and uh, to me it was not that big of a deal. It might seem like a chore to some people, but and I love, love the results, very whimsical. So, as I mentioned, I'd given myself a small amount for journaling and I ended up going way over that. This is almost like a half-half layout <laughs> and it wasn't intentionally that. So what I ended up doing is after I, I looked at it and, and I put the, the darker navy paper behind it, it was gonna interfere with the journaling. I ended up putting back some of these arrows that were cut out. And if you can see, it's not quite like it's seamless because there's mixed media on some of those portions and the arrows are stark white within the mixed media. And I actually ended up loving this result. It's almost like a ghost effect where I'm transitioning from the, the area under my the middle of my journaling that is solid. And then you have these little outlines of arrows. Uh, you know, in person, I, I'm not sure how many people would catch that. My husband did as soon as I showed him the layout and he's looking at it and he's like, he did like a double take and he's like, wait, are those arrows? Did you add those after? And, and I said, yeah. And he agreed. It was kind of an, a neat effect and it was a happy accident. Totally was just me not realizing how much space I needed and I just overcut. But I ended up liking that as another layer of detail. So if you ever mess up like that, just put back your cutouts and it's kind of neat. So I went away and I did some stitching. I knew right away I wanted to stitch down the title. It sort of separates it a little more. Not only is it uh, bigger, but with the stitching there. And I stitched a double row of just meandering stitch around the, the perimeter of the white. I really love doing that. And then I come here and ruffle, which is another thing I absolutely love doing. Um, you know, it was sort of just random, like, yeah, I'm just gonna lift this part, this, 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 this part up, fold there. And and then I was noticing, I really want some more of that constellation type background to show. So I was trying to go around wherever those little stars, if you can see them, are, just sort of lift up around them. Uh, that was a good strategy, I think, in this case. 
and then there's other spots that I just kind of did randomly uh, just for fun I love adding texture with ruffles so uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that uh, I missed as I was talking <laughs> Uh, I did snip off the here the threads but I did leave some hanging I, another layer of just detail that I love and I did go back once I had the background stitched on here I am doing a little more of it I did use the matte medium with the little brush under the cutout arrows that I added uh, to stitch them uh, to sorry glue them down to the background so they wouldn't I wouldn't I didn't want them to lift up and move around okay my photo you know I didn't want it just plopped on the background so I wanted a little matting and here I'm going to try a couple of little I just went to my scraps and picked a few scraps and I started off with this and what I like about it is oh i try to add this little strip of washi just so i'm like oh stars washi oh maybe i could do something with this it, it never makes it and here i'm trying out a few other scraps of paper they were too bright i felt like they were just too bright uh i needed something a little darker and these two here are what fit the bill and then that one small piece there it was too small to mat all the way around but what I ended up doing, it was just putting a sliver on the right hand side and you can see it mimics the curtain in the photo. So my daughter at the time was, uh, had bunk beds and the top bunk, she wanted a little cave. So I got her some curtains. They were denim with embroidered aqua stripes. She's an aqua girl and uh, I use tension rods and so that's what you see that on the photo on the sliver on the right is part of the curtain so that paper on the I'm sorry that was the left the paper on the right has the same kind of stripiness and then I kept trying to put more layers but in the end just the two layers there was enough for the photo and I will mention now I'll probably have to mention it again my photo has on her face and on her body there's these blue areas she had a little night light in there uh, and it was blue and so there was that reflection I went once I took the photos I did not like and my husband pointed out it's really odd so I ended up going back editing the photo reprinting it and putting a new photo on my layout without the blue weird spots on her <laughs> All right, so here I'm pulling out some fun things. I did that ahead of time. Evolicious, I love Evolicious. I have tons of her stuff. Those are those little puffy stickers right there that says daily. There was evidence. Uh, color cast designs, the wood veneer circles. And one of the, the aqua just saying is an October afternoon, really vintage flair. And the other one is from Feed Your Craft and that flair with the one that says one day we'll laugh about this. The bow is Bella Boulevard. It came from one of my wild hair kits. I had like two out of the five left over. So that was perfect there just to add a little something sweet. And then those enamel dots. Okay, so this was a big controversy in the Scrap Gals group, if you guys are familiar with them and the podcast. There was a thread about it things like why would you ever I think it was and it made it to a discussion on the podcast where uh, someone mentioned about why would you ever make your own enamel dots and I agree that it's like oh there's billions out there they're not that expensive why would you ever but I ended up doing this because I was fascinated when I found out that people had these striped enamel dots and they came from melting down perler beads that were the striped ones. So I ended up doing that. I just spent like one afternoon doing you know, several batches of different colors and I love, love, love them. I have a whole bunch of them. I'm so happy I'm using some here on this layout because they're fun. Um, and they were super easy to make too. So I would only make my own enamel dots for something special like these stripes. So where I decided to do my clusters were at the top and bottom of the journaling in the corners and then 
to make a triangle, I did the bigger cluster right on the right of my photo. And what worked really well, because so much of the space is taken up by journaling, is to have very small little things for the cluster. So in this case, those enamel dots and teeny tiny stars. Those are from Coco Vanilla Studio. And what I liked is that they had both the very small filled in ones and outlined ones. And it just gave it more visual interest, but didn't take up much space. I put down the enamel dots with glue dot brand micro dots, not mini. Mini, and I think most people have used mini, are about an eighth of an inch. Micro dots are a sixteenth of an inch wide, and they just work so perfectly for something so tiny. Now here with the bigger cluster, so my trilogy of clusters here, the bigger one, it made sense to bring the eye over across to the right because the left is so heavy and uh, so I made this a bigger cluster stuck with mostly circular objects. I briefly considered putting some flare in other areas but with all that journaling it's so much that it did not make sense to put anything more with words over there. I fiddle here a little bit with the cluster. I just wanted to make sure that I couldn't really tuck it under and cut off some of the words, so I just stuck it on top of one of the layers. And then for the date, instead of stamping, because the journaling is about things that take place over years, and my photo is actually from last year and it is not currently my view, I did a photo date and a journaling date, which I don't know if I've ever done before. Went ahead and typed it on vellum and strips just like the writing on the left. So here are some close-ups. Hopefully you can see that shimmer of some of the splatters, plus, uh, you know, those arrows ghosting from the from the left-hand side there. I, I don't know, I think I, I really like that effect. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope that you've had fun and seeing this process video, that it encourages you to try this, this mix and match style it's uh, It can be very whimsical and fun. I just want to mention thanks to all my new subscribers. I've had quite a bit recently. And for those of you that haven't, there is now a subscribe button on my videos. So just hit that. You'll want to do that because I'm nearing a thousand subscribers. So I'm going to be doing a giveaway soon, an updated room tour. I'll be posting some of the organizing videos that I haven't had a chance to edit and, and a big giveaway. So Thanks for watching again, and I will see you here next time.